Hello, my name is Gage Johnson, and I'm going to talk about my project, a solar panel mounted ultrasonic anemometer. Currently, the National Science Foundation is funding research to determine the effects of wind on rooftop solar arrays. Hope Technology Building was chosen as a field location due to the regular high wind speeds in Ellensburg. Wind speed, pressure, strain, and acceleration data is currently being recorded but wind speed measurements are being recorded in front of the solar panels in an unobstructed location. The purpose of this project is to measure the wind speed across the back plane of the solar panels with the hope to understand how the wind interacts with the solar array and record this data with the data collected from other NSF sensors. An ultrasonic anemometer is a device that uses the time of flight of ultrasonic sound waves to measure wind speed. This works because sound travels faster if the wind is moving in the same direction as an ultrasonic pulse and slower when wind is moving in the opposite direction of an ultrasonic pulse. This difference in time can be used to find wind velocity. Some pros of using an ultrasonic anemometer include faster sampling rates than mechanical anemometers and no moving parts that can be damaged. Materials for this project include LabVIEW 2019 FPGA module, a CREO 9047, a NI 9304 digital input output module, and an NI 9205 voltage input module, and a CUSP TR18 transducer. The method for recording time of flight was done in a lab by placing two ultrasonic transducers facing each other six inches apart and a fan is used to generate a 5 mile per hour wind. LabVIEW FPGA then creates a 40 kHz digital waveform output on the NI9403. The transceiver uses this digital waveform to create an ultrasonic signal. At the same time, the current tick count of the CPU clock is recorded. The CUSP receiver produces a voltage when it detects the generated ultrasonic pulse. This voltage is being pulled with the NI9205, and when it reaches a shutoff voltage, another CPU tick count is recorded. The difference in these two tick counts represents how many periods of the CPU's internal clock passed from generation of the signal to detection of the signal. This difference represents the time of flight of the ultrasonic pulse. The first figure shows the LabVIEW FPGA block diagram used to generate and receive the ultrasonic pulses. Here is a table of the recorded time of flight in milliseconds. There are three test environments, no wind, wind in the positive direction, and wind in the negative direction. Each trial is an average of 30 measurements. The data is then displayed on a graph. The data shows that both the positive and negative wind produced slower time of flights than the no wind trials. This could be due to turbulence in the generated wind interfering with the receiving transducer's ability to detect the ultrasonic pulse. Incorporating the data collection with the current NSF data cannot be completed due to a network delay preventing a 40 kHz signal from being sent to the transducer. This problem was solved by converting the project to an FPGA module. But because of this, the panel anemometer program could not run in conjunction with the current NSF program, so data collection from all sensors could not be done at the same time. Some improvements to this project would be using a microcontroller to manage the ultrasonic pulses so the program on the microcontroller could be run simultaneously with the current LabVIEW program. Thank you.